Solo Showdown as a whole is a very intricate and complex game mode. Many Brawl Stars players tend to find it very difficult or even boring to play because of it, as there is so much to learn and so much to pay attention to. However, even the best of the best Showdown players will still tend to struggle in certain situations and not be so conscious of specific elements, which is what inspired me to create this video. I'm going to take Jean, Daryl, Crow, and Piper into today's current map, Forsaken Falls, to bring to you an all-in-one video covering the four most advanced and challenging techniques that there is to solo showdown. But before we do hop into the games, I will quickly say that if you do like what you see or have any further questions regarding this video, be sure to pop into my Twitch chat. I stream every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The links are down in the description below. Without further ado, let's jump right into the first game. Okay, spawning on the right hand side of the map we do have a Daryl and a Piper who spawn near us So my first goal here is because this map in particular doesn't actually have any power cubes Is to find a very good position on the map as the first game that we're going to be playing will be focusing on advanced positioning And some special strategies you guys can use to get a better edge on your opponents Which I'm going to go into right now So what I did was I spawned on the right hand side of the map and I've moved straight to these bushes Why? Well, I've played this map a lot just from playing Shonen in general And I have had a lot of success with these bushes in particular this little corner just here on the map there are a couple other spots that I do like with like those bushes just over there. There's like patches of, of four. Those are really good to hide in. And also on the bottom left corner of the map, there's another good spot on the map that's really good to hide in. So as you do play the game a little bit more and you figure out how the maps work, where people go, where people tend to fight, you'll sort of figure out where people don't want to go and where you can sort of hide in, you can reposition, you can play the game well. So as you can see, this spot here is very untrafficked, I guess. There's not really anyone who actually comes to this little corner. So I can hold my ground here for the entire game up until the storm tries to push me out and then we can just take advantage of that really well as you can see seven people left and the storm is starting to push us out and the meteors have actually done a lot of work so i picked gene for this because gene has some really good range and with actually the meteors crashing down and destroying the map and making it really wide open gene's going to be very easy to grab pulls on people and also because he does a lot of damage up close looks like we do have a daryl over here who's getting pinched by some brawlers so i'm going to do my best to just help out and just do a little bit of damage to make sure that he can't get near so right there he's going to use his roll but it's not going to do anything for him because he's too far away um i do have my pull now so i'm going to look to pull this Piper if she does come close although she saw that we were a gene she took a few shots and just left um, and now we're still holding the bottom right corner of the map just not in those bushes anymore but we're still in a very good spot on the map so as you can see when you do position yourself well and you know the map really well as well it's going to be very helpful to just win some games and play really well place high and gain a lot of trophies from pretty much doing nothing because there's no real reason to move from this corner of the map as long as you know what to do so there's a Piper over here with a super um, there's an M's over there with three cubes and no super. I can pull both of them to get a very easy kill, but I want to try and get it so it's a 1v1 because if I do that, then I won't have to use my pull and then have to recharge it again. So I'm going to chip at this Piper because the Piper is actually in range and much easier to go for. This M's went into the storm. And I don't know why. I'm going to hold on to my pull because no, no need to use it. And we just managed to take out the easy win there, um, grabbing that first place victory. So we played that extremely well. Like I just held my ground in the bottom right corner of the map in that little L-shaped bush for the majority of the game. And we just played it well off of there, making sure we chipped at people didn't get taken out we took a very easy first place like this map is really interesting because there's no power cubes so it's much easier to just camp in a bush all game and still have a good advantage over other people as you saw that daryl didn't actually have any power cubes um it was just very easy overall so without further ado let's jump into the second game and we'll see how it goes Okay, so this time we're hopping into it with Daryl spawning at the bottom of the map. And in this game, I want to showcase uh, juking and being able to dodge people's shots. So right here, uh, this Pam actually got very close to us. I'm just going to roll straight onto her just to get really close. And we should be able to pick up an easy kill here. So I'm not too sure what she was doing. There wasn't really much juking I could really do there. Because for one, Pam's attack is very hard to dodge because it's a very wide funnel. And second of all, she just didn't play that well at all. So we're going to go look for some other people now. We do have our roll charged up and ready to go. Uh, Crow's going to be hard to juke. Although what I can do is try and bait out his shots by wall peeking which is a way of being able to force people's ammos out of them this crow is pretty weak though because he fought the bow i'm actually just going to roll the bow right here to finish him off get the kill take him out i'm going to shoot this crow as well and i'm going to fall back because if i do go super aggro i am going to get taken out and i don't want that happening so i'm just going to play it very safe make sure that i play smart instead of rushing in and getting kills and we're going to see if maybe these crows fight each other so it looks like they are teaming this crow is, was trying to get the other crow to see me by um shooting at me i'm going to be able to roll him to force his jump hopefully and we should be able to take him out getting another kill but we are 
are going to have to ditch that power cube. Although, he did just get stunned there. I have my super. I'm going to be able to pressure him with my health um, to hopefully get the cube, although the Primo did just come up there and snag it from us instead. So, we haven't had to juke many shots right now. We've just been playing really smart, making sure that we roll out of situations and not getting taken out. I do want to help this M's grab the Primo, though, because I do not want this Primo in between me and the M's. So, if I keep chipping at him, hopefully, he will get stunned or something like right there. He got stunned by this. Mine's going to back away. I'm going to grab this cube, and I'm going to roll the M's if she does get into range. So, juking M's shots is also very difficult because she has a very widespread funnel attack. There's not really much to say there other than trying to get really close to her because if you get right on top of an M's, you're going to get a very free kill. So I'm just going to use my roll right here just to get straight onto her. We do have steel hoops, which is going to tank a lot of the damage. We should be able to grab this cube now and we're going to have four cubes, which is very good um, on a map like Forsaken Falls where you don't really get that many power cubes. We have a Daryl over here. So when you're juking shots against like another shotgunner, what you're going to try and do is you want to try and shoot first to be able to get your shot off and then fall back straight away because that way you sort of duck back and don't take as much damage as they do. Although I'm not doing too good of a job of actually hitting him. So I'm just going to fall back, heal up, and I'm going to go for the other player, which I believe is a Mortis, who seems to be hiding up in these bushes instead. So I will go back to the Daryl, though. I just want to make sure that we get rid of this other Mortis who's trying to just take us out and sort of snag the kill. This Daryl's not on the same page, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to try and take him out anyway. So this Mortis in the Meteor there. I'm actually going to get hit by the Meteor, so I'm going to be very careful here. This Daryl is not going to leave me alone. So I'm just going to finish the Mortis to secure the kill. I'm just going to use my gadget because I can, and we should be able to take second place here at least. So there we go. Very good game there. I'm very happy with how we played that out. So in terms of juking, we didn't really get too many examples with long range brawlers and I'm not going to be able to cover that in this video because I'm covering different techniques. Although if you do want my video on juking, I did make a video on that with Mortis I believe so I will link that down in the description below. But as I was saying, when you're juking against a brawler that is playing the exact same brawler as you, so in this case it was a Daryl, you want to try and get your shot first and then duck back as quick as you can because you got the same range. If you can hit your shot before the other person can and then fall back, you're going to be able to hit them but then they aren't going to be able to hit you back. So it's a really good strategy you can use to dodge enemy shots. So without further ado, let's to the third game and we'll get some more examples. Okay, so this time we're spawning in the bottom left corner of the map. We do have a Max and a Mr. P who spawn near us. We are playing Crow this game because we're going to try to show you guys how you can apply pressure on your enemies. So this Leon did a very good job of that actually because he ran straight for the Mr. P and took advantage of the really interesting spawn points and managed to take him out very quickly. We actually helped with that though because we tried to go for the Mr. P as well, which put him in a really bad spot and he was just got taken out very easily right off the start of the game. And now what we're going to do is try to pressure this Leon who did take out the Mr. P. So what I'm going to do to be able to succeed with that is we're going to keep him weak, keep him poisoned and shits because that makes him a target that everyone's going to try and go for. If he's not healing, then he's going to be a very easy kill and people are going to keep on maintaining him weak and it's going to be very easy for us. So that Leon, just like I said there, he was so weak, he was just going to get taken out by someone else. Looks like a cult did that. we got a Tara over here, took out a cult. I'm going to try and chip her as well, keeping her under pressure as you can see. We're pushing her all the way to the top of the map and she keeps falling back, which is really helpful. We are going to eventually get our super off of it, just like we did there. I'm going to do my best to maintain her poisoned as you can see. She's not doing a very good job of healing up here because we're able to just keep her weak with our poison shot so I am going to try and jump her although I don't think it's worth it because she does have a super now and she can take us out very easily if we don't play it well so I'm out of ammo now she's going to end up healing up unfortunately but that's okay we should be able to get her um, pretty soon here because she is pinched with the storm she didn't hit any of her shots and we're still doing a very good job here just keeping her weak keeping her weak making sure that she's under pressure not able to heal I am being cautious though because I don't want her just sort of turning back on me and dealing a lot of damage but she did manage to get away there unfortunately because she managed to outrun us and we weren't able to keep her poisoned so we're in a very good spot on the map right now at the very top. There's no one else up here. So I can either play for position and play for safety, making sure that I stay up here and don't get taken out. Or I can keep going aggressive, trying to maybe get the kill on the Tara. But it is a lot more riskier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to keep my corner just at the top here. This isn't the ideal situation because I can't really see the Tara. But she can see us, which is not too great. But I'm going to do my best to make sure that I can keep her weak. And hopefully that this Daryl will help us intercept the fight and actually go for her. Because it'll be a lot easier for us to do that. So Daryl's still on the left hand side of the map out of our render distance. I see his super though just in the corner there. I'm doing my best to keep this Tara under pressure, making sure that she's poisoned. I am also watching out for her super. If she does use her super, I'm going to do my best to jump away as well. Tara's in a very bad spot. I'm not too sure what she's doing. Um, just sort of not taking any shots right now. Daryl looks like he might be eyeballing me. She's going to use her, her pull. I'm going to jump into the storm. Probably not a good idea. I did kind of panic there thinking that she was going to pull me and that Daryl was, was going to support the kill and actually take me out. So I tried to jump away to 
get out of the situation so they would fight, but it didn't really work out that well. We don't have enough health to withstand the damage of the storm. So instead of taking maybe second or first, we took the third place victory there. But I'm still very happy with that nonetheless. So I feel like I played that very well, making sure that we kept that Tara on the pressure. She was the main target for that whole game. The example with the Leon as well was a really good one, making sure that he was constantly poisoned because that eventually got him taken out by that Colt and we were able to secure another kill, advancing us further into the game. So without further ado, let's come to the fourth and final game and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so this time we're spawning at the bottom of the map. We do have a Leon and a Crow who spawn near us. So this is actually going to be a very good example for what I'm going to try and showcase because we are playing Piper. I'm going to try and showcase how you can kite people around the map. So unfortunate for that Crow who went incredibly aggressive. Um, that's actually a very good example of kiting. So what we did there is because kiting is when you're able to entice someone where they're so aggressive on you to the point where they start following you around the map, trying to take you out as much as they can for whatever reason. That Crow saw the opportunity on us, us playing Piper and he was really close to us. He thought, I'm going to rush her. I'm going to get an easy easy kill, but little did he know that we were able to deal enough damage and a Meteor luckily just spawned on us, took him out, and that's a very good example of kiting. So normally, you can do it with players, although you can do it with stuff like the Meteors. Normally what will happen is you'll try and pull someone into someone else, so say there's another player on the map and someone's chasing you, and you run into that player, so now you're the center of attention, you're getting third partied. However, if you're good enough and you're able to turn that situation around, so the person that was chasing you gets taken out, you can get a very easy kill and win the game. So this game has gone by very quickly. I'm glad that we managed to get an example of kiting with that Crow in the beginning of the game, although it looks like there's a Leon who's just been terrorizing the whole game the entire time. I'm not going to be able to kite at all anymore because obviously it's a Leon and there's no one else in the game, so I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that. Although we still did very good this game, I'm going to try my best to win it now. We do have a longer range than this Leon does. He's just using his gadgets and I'm not too sure why. They're just one shot for me and very easy to take out. So he's just doing his thing, getting some chip shots. He's probably going to go for some super um, and he's used two gadgets. I don't know if he's used all three yet. Looks like we got one shot on him. I'm going to try and peek him from under the wall there, just trying to line up my shot perfectly. Although he's actually behind that wall in a very good spot and we're just going to move somewhere else so he did just get his invisibility there i'm going to try and heal up if he tries to go invisible on me we should be able to just jump away which is really easy i'm going to just take some random shots at him i'm going to see if i can maybe bait him to the spring trap he didn't even get anywhere near us which is really bad for him and he's going to have to charge his super all over again so we're just going to wait up to heal here and then i'm going to just peek under here and try and jump away so we're going to jump away over there he's actually going to run away on the water we're going to try and get some shots on him we are getting meteor spawning on us which is very unfortunate and we did end up taking the second place victory unfortunately so he had a lot of power cubes, he had the upper hand there, he had his super, his gadgets and whatnot. I try my best to hit my shots, but Leon's movement speed is really quick, which makes it a lot harder for a Piper to deal damage to him. But I'm still very happy with the example that we got on the Crow in the beginning of the game with kiting. Um, if you didn't understand what I was talking about in that game, I'm going to quickly recap that now. So kiting is when you're able to pull someone because they're very aggressive on you and take them around the map and make sure that they're so aggressive that you could try and run them into a bad situation. So in that situation, we ran him into a Meteor, which got him killed and it gave us a free power power cube and also the upper hand but normally what will happen is you'll try and run someone into other players and then what you're going to try and do is turn that game around and be able to take them out instead just with the help of the other person so we weren't able to get that in this video i did get that in the separate video that i made dedicated to kiting so if you want to check that one out i'll leave a link down in the description below um but that's going to be it for me today guys i hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel because i make these how to win style videos every tuesdays and thursdays but now that we're on quarantine i am making them on saturdays as well so you definitely don't want to miss out on those but if you do have any further questions regarding this video please pop it to my twitch chat i do stream every friday saturday and sunday the links are down in the description below so if you do want to talk to me about something that's a really good place to do it anyways though that's gonna be it for me today and as always keep sweating bye i'm going to the corner bye come here come here soup freaking catch it yes into the storm yes <laughs>